Good morning. Well, I want to start by showing you this. Thank you. So, what's your name? My name is Beverly McClellan. But now the idea, we've got to get rid of five people. I've got to get rid of two. Everyone's wondering what Gaga's going to wear. After the meat dress last year, we started a hashtag, hashtag what will Gaga wear? Send us your favorite tweets. And we got a trending topic for everybody following us on Twitter. It's are you for real? Hit us up, twitter.com slash 106 apart and put are you for real in your tweet. This ARP means that the homeowner has to pay much more than they thought they signed up for. Be sure you follow me on Twitter so we can live chat during the shows. Allison Hayes will hear your official V correspondent and guide to all that is digitally awesome at The Voice. Join Jeff Probst at Jeff Probst, tweeting live right now and throughout tonight's Survivor episode. Top 10 trending topics on Twitter in the United States. Five of them are about this show right now. Unbelievable. And with me right now is Team Christina. They're getting in on the action. So if you want to tweet any of Christina's team directly, and I know you do, tweet them at their handles. Just go to at NBC The Voice slash artist. It is Book the Comedians, set in the Papa Doc era Haiti of the 60s. Graham Greene's ambivalent hero describes the Trianon Hotel he's returning to. about 1.3 million VMA-related tweets since the pre-show began. Lady Gaga is the top artist on our Twitter tracker with 1,200 tweets per minute, but Justin Bieber is not far behind with over 900. If you want to vote for any of the acts tonight using Twitter, go to twitter.thexfactorusa.com. Hey, you guys, it's time for late-night hashtags. Here we go. I'm just going to stay home and watch The Bachelor and try to find all the chicks that get kicked off on Facebook. <laughs> We've been keeping track of your tweets. You've been talking up the judges. An absolute storm. Take a look at this. Oh, it seems that L.A. Reid is the most popular judge at the moment. Can I first of all ask for a recount, please? Because that doesn't sound right to me. Um, irritating. Okay, start tweeting me, please. Okay. All right, good morning. What is all this Twitter and TV stuff? We will talk a little bit more about that, but at first I just wanted to say, really, really appreciated Kristen's talk. I love the fact that we're able to hear directly from an organization that's not only doing this, but also paving the way and being innovators in this space. I wanted to say something about social TV, and, ah. Ah, there we go. <laughs> um, the first thing I wanted to say about social TV is that it's actually not something that's very new. It actually predates the internet, uh, and arguably and ironically probably predates TV itself. So the reason I say that is that social TV is based upon a fundamental human instinct that in order to enjoy and to complete the experience of enjoying something, that experience gets shared. Um, it's almost as if that exclamation of your enjoyment completes the enjoyment uh, or is a necessary part of it. And you can think about that, you know, not just for TV, but for film, for food, for sport, uh, politics, religion, sex, anything that you're passionate about. And with TV, it just so happens that the exclamation that you are seeing today is more often encapsulated and captured perfectly in a tweet. And that's what we're seeing. Millions of users around the world tweeting or exclaiming about the broadcasting and the programming they're seeing on air. And we see this a number of times again and again. All you have to do is go on Twitter and see what the trending topic is. And you might be able to see a program guide there and see what's on TV that night. And what's changed, though, is that all of a sudden, with Twitter, you have a more closely connected, richer global experience of that because you're not only just experiencing and sharing that in the reception with your family and friends, you're sharing that with the world. And I want to sh show you this. 
It's kind of hard to see, but that's the reason social TV is something that a broadcaster doesn't decide to have. It's something that is here and now, meaning it's going to happen whether a broadcaster decides to have it or not. And the question for the producer, for the broadcaster, is how to harness the energy that is social TV uh, for your programs. And I think there's broadly three approaches to this. And we, we like to think about this in uh, categories of being spontaneous, organized, and artful. And the first category is spontaneous. And you could think of each of one of these as, as if you are a host to a party, right? You're inviting people to a party which is your program. And it can be a spontaneous party, meaning you don't have to do anything and the party will just happen. We see this happen all the time on TV. So if you're taking the spontaneous route, you're probably not doing much. You're just pr putting programming on air and trusting that people will engage and, and just come to the party. And we're seeing that through the data, right? So recent data shows, and this is really hard to see, under 25s use, use the seconds, 80% of people under 25 use the second screen to communicate with friends while watching TV. And 72% of those use Twitter, Facebook, or some mobile app. So it's going on. People are coming to your party on air and engaging with it and sharing with other people. This gives you an idea of how that works. Because these are our tweets per second uh, records that have been established in the past year. And with each of these, uh, you can see, I don't know if you're able to read that, the UEFA, uh, the BET Awards, um, New Year's in Japan, and some football matches uh, ending with the Women's World Cup, and uh, what Kristen was talking about earlier when Beyonce announced that she was pregnant. With the exception of BET, there was no specific call to action, and there was no, nothing specifically planned for it, as Kristen had mentioned. It was something more spontaneous, but their production team and their social team were geared up to be able to take advantage of that. Um, but as you see, with this many tweets per second, and these are our records now, um, and there, there are more uh, since uh, last month's Super Bowl, it basically shows how people are coming to your programming, coming to your party, and engaging. And that's through nothing that people are actually, uh, the broadcasters are actually doing. It's just happening, uh, whether they like it or not. So that's the spontaneous approach. No invitation, no specific ve uh, venue, and no theme. Uh, so there was really nothing that was sent out to invite the audience in. Now, the question is, you know, with the spontaneous approach and then the more organized and then to the artful, why you would want to move from spontaneous to more organized and artful? And there's some really interesting early data on this. So this is TV Guide in the U.S., just published last month, some interesting data. So, so the impact of social media on TV viewership. They looked at this, and it... That first line, 76% of TV viewers were prompted to start watching a TV show by positive comments. 64% uh, are interested in TV show due to social media buzz about the show topics or the storylines. And 13% 30, uh, like to watch a TV show that others watch. And this makes sense to me because I'm actually in th this demographic, right? There's, there's time and time again when I could think of when I was on the internet and saw something about a program live. And the most recent example of this was during the Australian Open, the t tennis uh, Australia Open, where Nadal and Djokovic were just uh, at each other's throats for nearly five hours. And I'm not a huge tennis fan, and I didn't even know that, that the match was going on, but the amount of people talking about this match uh, was just overwhelming, and to the point where after four hours, seeing how many people were just talking about it, I had to tune in, and again, it was, uh, and I was really glad I did, it was a very epic match, uh, close to five hours. And that gives you an example of how the buzz around a particular program can drive uh, viewership. The other piece of interesting uh, research they released is that 77% um, said that social media helped hold interest in a TV show, 66% said that the TV show storylines discussed on social media uh, are interesting, and 34% said buzz around a TV show's controversies help keep me engaged. So not only is this an acquisition, is there an acquisition element to this, right? So people are talking about a show, and people not watching those shows uh, are seeing uh, people talking about it, and you're now acquiring viewers. 
it's also a retention uh, mechanism. So people that are watching the show are not just passively consuming anymore, but they're actively engaged. So that leads me to sort of the organized approach. So if you think of yourself as a host inviting people to your party, you want to get the right elements out there. And there's tools on Twitter that we are seeing now that are coming to be best practices to be able to increase your Twitter engagement by 2 to 10x. So that's basically hashtags on air, especially when paired with a creative call to action, uh, having at handles shown of talent, uh, and having talents uh, live tweet or synchronously tweet when the program is airing. I'll walk through each one of these. Uh, but if you look at the, this is an actual invitation uh, to the royal wedding last year. And there you have uh, the host, you have a theme, you have a venue, you have a time. And this is actually uh, done by an ordinary person. Instead of saying that the venue was at uh, Westminster Abbey, it was actually on TV. So quite literally an invitation to a social TV party. And if you think about our tools with hashtags, account names, um, and having talent uh, be part of the programming, it really does give you the tools to be able to send out that invitation, uh, of including place, time, theme, venue, and people. And that's the clip that we saw at the beginning. The many different programs and broadcasters in the US, as well as here, doing that very same thing, which is inviting people because they know that people will be engaged with them and making it in, the, in a way that it's inviting people to a party that they would otherwise spontaneously have, but now they're able to coordinate it in a much more organized fashion. So I'll show you some of this. This is, this is hashtags on air. So uh, when the Oscars, uh, flashed this hashtag right here, hashtag Oscars, the lower third, that immediately spiked the mentions of hashtag Oscars. So that gives you uh, a real-time benefit in being able to connect to your users and, and consumers and viewers because they are talking about your programming, and once you give them a way to get into that discussion, they'll absolutely use this. Um, this is a more local example. So last year, uh, LOCOG, the London Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games, had done a campaign about one year to go, uh, one year to go at that point to the opening ceremonies of the Olympics. And they used the hashtag one year to go. Uh, and you see throughout the, the, the two or three days, there's different levels of excitement and different levels of, of uh, mentions about the hashtag. And where you see that spike, is actually during uh, a, a live broadcast at Trafalgar Square. If you zoom into that, it's because the BBC was broadcasting it. So things on air get engaged with, and if you see those two spikes right around 7.23 and 7.33, is at the very moment when the hashtag was actually broadcast on air. We see another local example here, Channel 4 did a program about ticket scandals uh, involving peer-to-peer -peer ticket sales. And they invited people, uh, again, an invitation to engage with them on Twitter using that uh, hashtag ticket scandal. And then you can see on the trends that the hashtag ticket scandal was the number one trending topic in the UK. So that's hashtags on air. Now, having at handles on air as well. And at handles is a really a uh, powerful way to get followers, almost like subscribers, and you can communicate to them uh, for free. And there you have Piers Morgan, he's the host of CNN, um, showing his at handle on air, and you see immediately the followers per minute corresponding directly to when those at handles get shown. Talent live tweeting. So th I think this is one of the more interesting parts of the party, right? Because the people at the party will make a difference. And Oxygen Live, uh, Oxygen is a, is a network in the US. What they did was an experiment called Oxygen Live. And what they did, decided to do was that for the next season of one of when their shows, they had their talent live tweeting synchronously with the broadcast of the show. So when the show was bro being broadcast on air, the talent would start tweeting about the show. Now, they did this in a way that was uh, really interesting because in the US, at least, you have a way of having a control and uh, experimental group with the East Coast and West Coast time zones. So this was the baseline for the, uh, the previous year. They didn't do anything else other than the Oxygen Live experiment. 
only on the East Coast, and on the East Coast they saw a boost of viewership of more than 100%. And on that same broadcast, three hours later, they only saw a boost of 9, 9% where they didn't do the Oxygen Live live tweeting experiment. The following week, they switched it around. They actually did it on the West Coast, and they saw a 57% boost in viewership. So that's a really powerful way of getting your talent engaged with your viewers as part of the programming. Another good example of this is Howard Stern. Last year, uh, one of his old movies, a uh, 1997 movie, uh, Private Parts, was aired by HBO. And randomly on a weekend, uh, if you were following Howard Stern, he started tweeting about the show as it was being aired on HBO, giving behind the scene commentary, so that if you weren't actually watching it, and you saw uh, Howard tweeting about it, and people retweeting it and mentioning it, you knew that HBO was playing it, and we understand that it drove a lot of viewers uh, to HBO. But more importantly, it was really a way for people to be able to see a behind-the-scenes uh, perspective from one of the talent. And so with these couple of, of examples, uh, Jeff Probst, uh, who's, the, who's a, a host of a popular TV show in the US called Survivor, took that example of doing live tweeting during the, air, uh, during the airing of a broadcast uh, and did a similar experiment where in 2011, he live tweeted during every single episode of Survivor. And if you compare that to the previous year where there was no live tweeting, there was about a 4x in increase in tweets and engagements around that programming. But also interestingly, you see the arc changing. Not only do you have more engagement, but you don't, so typically you see uh, a spike at the premiere, some dip during the mid-season, and, and a spike during the finale. What you see with the live tweeting is that the, there's a spike at the premiere, but it actually builds in conversation during the season and leading to a really big f finale. So there you, see, you have uh, talent being involved with the programming uh, synchronously. So the last uh, approach, which is going beyond just the regular best practices that we have about putting hashtags on air, uh, at handles on air, or live tweeting. And this is really something that I think MTV is doing really, really well. And that's an artful approach which, which actually gets the audience involved. And it gets the audience involved by um, allowing them to see a different perspective or allowing them to shape the narrative, very much uh, like what Kristen was talking about. So an example of this is uh, James Franco and Anne Hathaway came out uh, as host of the Oscars at the previous Oscars. And this is when they uh, walked out on stage at the very beginning of the program. And what you might not notice is that James Franco is holding uh, a, a device and he's recording his perspective of it. And later on, he tweets it out. And what he's showing is basically what he experienced during that show. An amazing example and use of being able to bring your audience closer, giving them a perspective they wouldn't otherwise have, and allowing them to be part of it. So there's another example here that I, I want to end with, uh, allowing the audience to be part of it, and not just being part of your programming, but to be able to shape and change the storyline. So here is an example from Fox News. This was a, a Republican debate at the South Carolina uh, primary. And what they did was basically use Twitter to be able to gauge the pulse of people watching the debate. And you'll see what they use in terms of hashtag, uh, asking people to tweet to hashtag answer if a candidate answered a question, or hashtag dodge if they think that the, uh, a candidate had dodged the question. You at home can participate through Twitter tonight. You can weigh in on how well the candidates are answering the questions. Tweet the candidate's last name and hashtag answer if you think he's tackling the question, or hashtag dodge if you think he's avoiding the question. So we're going to take a break right here. Remember to send your thoughts on how the candidates are answering the questions via Twitter. Uh, tweet the candidate's last name and hashtag answer or hashtag dodge. Send me questions at at Brett Bear. Include that hashtag SC debate. I don't know if your Twitter page is like mine. Mine is on fire. What have they, what's kind of been the consensus for the first hour of the debate? 
Let's take a look at this because this is very interesting. We've got the green line here for Newt Gingrich, a white line for Rick Santorum, and an orange line for Mitt Romney. Let's drill down on this and take a look at Mitt Romney, where the biggest dodges were perceived to be. First of all, his uh, answer and his back and forth with Rick Santorum on this issue of felons and whether or not they should be allowed to vote. People thought that he was dodging that, and look at the numbers here. And then on his tax records, he was seen as dodging that question so much that we couldn't actually record the number of people who were saying that he was dodging. The foreign policy, tweeting your questions at Brett Baer, include hashtag SC debate after this break. At Mr. Whiteman, has no child left behind been a success or a failure? If latter, what needs to be done to change it? Let's go to John Roberts with an update on how the Twitter audience thought the candidates fared tonight. Hi, John. Hey. Newt Gingrich did very well on foreign policy. Mitt Romney, as you can see, below the line. I've got to tell you, he spent most of the night below the line. Rick Santorum, seen as giving good answers, as well as uh, Rick Perry. And Ron Paul, we've got to tell you, Ron Paul spent the entire night in the good answer uh, section. And looking here at Newt Gingrich, Romney's record, he was a little more of a dodge than he was a good answer. The economy getting good points, race getting very good points, foreign policy pretty much the same thing. That's the way it came out tonight. It's a great example of, of uh, a broadcaster that's pulled together all the best practices. We worked with them on that. Um, not just the basics of putting hashtags on air and using talent and putting talent handles on air, but now bringing the audience closer and allowing the audience to be able to shape that narrative and change the storyline. So in closing, we think that most of the programming today is just spontaneous. Right? There's nothing really organized for the social TV party. But pretty soon, we're going to see as a standard broadcasters everywhere going for at least doing the minimum of doing you know, hashtags, uh, at handles, getting talent involved, and inviting people uh, in, in a way that people had not had a chance to do uh, in terms of engaging with the program before. And we'd love to see more and more examples of the artful. Bringing people closer, allowing them a different perspective, and also, more importantly, allowing them to shape that narrative and change the storyline. And it'd be great to see examples in this audience uh, to come. So I want to leave with uh, one question about what we're doing. And you know, we're staffing up very, very quickly to try to support you. Uh, one of the areas that we are hiring for is somebody to be able to work with broadcasters. So if that's something interesting to you, please tweet me. I'm at Tony W. Thank you very much. Take some questions? Uh, yeah, sure. Do we have time? Are there questions? any questions from the floor? Do you want to share that out? Sure. I'm just wondering uh, to what extent do you think uh, the integration of Twitter on TV is actually being able to like, see your tweets and all that on the TV? Okay. Hi, I'll take from the beginning. Uh, we've seen you mentioned smart TVs in your opening remarks and uh, Twitter is, of course, part of many of those. So to what extent do you think that makes sense to have Twitter part of the TV, actual TV screen as an app, as opposed to maybe holding a tablet and looking at the TV? So I, so I, I think the question was, how important is it to be part of the on-air experience as opposed to just No, I mean, they actually have a Twitter app on the TV, on a smart ah. TV, as opposed to using it on a tablet or a smartphone while you're watching the TV. Yeah, I think that, that comes down to user choice. So, you know, interactive TV has been on the horizon since forever, right? And there's some good efforts uh, underway. Um, but even without that ability to have an interactive TV or smart TV application, you're seeing a lot of engagement. So that means that the audience is there and there's an appetite for it. So whether it's an iPad, mobile device, or smart TV, I think that's really going to be a game changer there. It's, it's been something that's always been on the horizon, um, but it, it'll be, um, I, I think it'll be important and also will be a game changer, but we'll see.